Welcome to Look Smarter Than You Are with Oracle S-based Calc Scripts. We're going to cover an interesting topic, how to access environment variables set on the server via the dollar sign. So if you have an environment variable set up on your S-based server, you can actually access it in a Calc Script. What's interesting is that people do this a lot in Maxcell Scripts, but really very few people do it in S-based calculations, and it's really quite simple. The syntax is simply a dollar sign followed by whatever server side variable you want to pull in, whatever that environment variable might be. It could be something like path or username or processors. That variable name does have to exist or the script is going to error out. It's going to say environment variable, whatever it is, doesn't exist. Keep in mind an environment variable is not the same thing as a substitution variable. A substitution variable might be something like career year and it's set at the S base level. Environment variables are set at the server level. Now that doesn't mean you can't have an environment variable called current year and set it via DOS or Windows PowerShell or something. You just access it slightly differently. But variables, you access with a dollar sign. Substitution variables, you access with an ampersand. Now I have a series of videos on data exporting in a calc script, but here's a simple example where I've replaced the hard-coded file name with an environment variable. Notice it down at the bottom preceded by that ever helpful dollar sign. So rather than hard code the file name in, I can change the location of the file at the server level and it will always pull in that server environment variable and export to it. We could also use this to concatenate a file name onto a path, say, that we've specified via an environment variable, which kind of makes us wonder, can we use this technique, this dollar sign technique, to peek at what our environment variables are? Well, if we can run a calc script, yes, provided we know the name of the variable we want to check. The secret is to put the environment variable inside the at return function. Now to learn more about the at return function, see Tracy McMullen's video on it, but suffice to say that it has to be used inside of a calc member block. I have a member called actual, so that's easy enough for me to use as my member block. Now when I run that calc script, it will essentially error out in about 0.001 seconds, but it puts a handy entry in the application log that looks like this. I've edited down a little bit for simplicity. You'll see a few dot dot dots in there where it wasn't particularly interesting information. I included the entire running of the script, but the first two entries don't matter. They're just launching the script. The last three also don't matter because they're just sitting out of the calc in a somewhat violent crashy sort of way. The key part is that third section down. Notice I go to the server, pull the path variable, and it's much longer than this by the way. It goes on for many many lines, but you can see that in my installation it's in the Oracle directory, middleware subdirectory, directory, EPM system 11 R1 subdirectory, OPN bin is the first step of my path, all the way down to apparently OPM and bin appears again at the end of my path. That's somewhat interesting. So can we use this to pull other variables? Well, sure. Let's say we wanted to see the current username that Sbase was running under. All we have to do, actual, at return, username, comma, info. I could also say warning or error, but I like making it informational in my log file. I could use it to see the current Arbor path. So at return, dollar sign arbor path, comma info. I'm sure you can think of all kinds of other fun variables you might need to know. Just remember, use your powers for good.